Oh, hi neighbors. It's a beautiful day. We're here from the outside the box labs, scientifically socially distancing isolation lab today. And we're going to fly some things. Now, we heard last week that a couple people didn't have all the stuff ready because a certain somebody forgot to put some stuff in the materials list. So, let me go over with you really quickly what you're going to need to get. If you have them, two paper cups or plastic cups, any kind of disposable flimsy cup, tape of some sort, masking tape will do, scotch tape, cellophane tape will also work. You're also going to want a couple sheets, at least one, plain old regular paper, printer paper, an assortment of rubber bands, and one or more paper clips. Now, while we wait for a couple of you to join in and a couple people to grab any materials at the last minute here, we're going to go ahead and feed our snake Tesla. So check this out. We're going to zoom in on Tesla here. Tesla is about a two-year-old ball python. I think it's a she. We're not so sure. Tesla. Yeah, this way you guys all have time to grab your materials and you can watch. Maybe if you get lucky, you'll get to see the snake eat his prey because he hasn't eaten in about three weeks, so he's pretty hungry right now. He's nervous. You can tell everyone's watching him. No, he doesn't like other people around him when he <laughs> Just to be clear, yeah, we're only we're showing building. you guys this to give everybody time to get their materials because we had some comments last time that people needed a little more time to get their materials. So this is just kind of some background when you guys gather that stuff up if you're just coming in. It's kind of my fault. Something to watch while you're waiting for a second. We'll give everybody another minute. Does everybody have their stuff? And if you don't have the materials, you can scroll down in the details for this video and it has a list of everything you need so if anybody needs to gather up anything at the last minute just scroll down there and you'll see everything and then we'll get started he is a shy eater but he will actually eat this whole mouse in about 15 minutes. One big bite. And luckily this mouse already passed away. So he's not feeling anything. He was, he was already gone before the snake ate him. Okay. All right. And that's probably enough time for everybody to get their stuff. We'll bring you back over. Hi again, everybody. So tonight, we're going to make some things fly. You're going to make some things fly. And before we get started, a couple things we want to go over. Uh, for those of you who are new, my name is Talman. I'm from Outside the Box Labs. You just heard the voice of Sarah. She'll be doing the uh, camera work today while we're here in isolation doing our distance labs. Um, first thing is safety. Safety is always super important. We're going to be flying things. We're going to be launching things into the air. Um, first of all, you should always have a parent, adult, older sister, big brother, aunt, uncle, grandma, whoever around while you're doing this. Please don't do any of this without at least letting an adult know what you're doing. This is going to be especially important come next week when we start building rockets. We're going to be doing some things that are going to involve candles and flame and matches. You're definitely going to want to have an adult 
with you. If you don't, you can always watch this because it's being recorded. You can always go back and watch it later and do it then. Don't try to do anything by yourself without at least letting somebody know what you're doing, where you are, and making sure you've got the A-OK -okay from an adult, ideally the person that owns the property. Um, second of all, we are kind of moving into doing some contest stuff, some stuff to keep you busy while we're, uh, while we're on lockdown here. So our first little contest is what we're going to call the Rube Goldberg Machine Challenge. And for those of you that haven't seen what a Rube Goldberg Machine is, it's sort of this uh, pointless machine. Uh, it's extraordinarily complex, but it uh, generally has an end point. So maybe if you've seen some of those silly science movies out there, you've seen or like the crazy scientist wakes up in the morning and his alarm clock automatically starts his toaster and brews his coffee and flips his pancakes. We want to see if you can design and build a Rube Goldberg machine. And we want you to build the duration of the, the contest will be while we're all under quarantine, isolation, lockdown. So we don't even know how long this thing's going to go on for. But that'll give you plenty of time. You can add pieces to it. You can add bits to it. These things are kind of never-ending. You should, A, have an endpoint or a goal. I want it to turn on a light. I want it to water a plant at the end. I want it to, um, I don't know, start the toaster. Whatever weird thing you can think of. But we'd like you to build your machine, submit videos to us, and the winner of this contest, as judged by the Outside the Box Labs crew, will win a $100 Amazon gift card. Now, if that isn't cool enough, we have also put together what we are calling our DIY Sci Kit, and it is kind of a general kit with general science bits and pieces. We've got a handful of test tubes, a sample of gallium, some uh, enamel copper wire, which is great for building motors, and electromagnets, a few neodymium magnets, a couple chemical samples, a petri dish, some other good stuff that can be used just generally during what we're doing here in these live videos or can be used just for at-home experimentation. But each DIY side kit that is purchased will come with one mystery piece for your Rube Goldberg machine. It might be a gear. It might be a cog. It might be a jack screw. You don't know. But if you can incorporate that piece into your machine, you will have a ticket that comes with it. Submit your ticket for a second drawing for another $100 gift card. So you have the chance to win perhaps $200 gift cards if you win the machine contest and your ticket is drawn for the mystery piece for the Rube Goldberg machine. With that, we are going to launch right into launching things. And so we're going to build a couple different flying machines today. Um, and then we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you how to launch them. Now our first flying machine is exceedingly simple and it may at first you might look like this thing isn't going to fly, this isn't going to do anything, but rest assured it does. And this is going to involve our two cups and our tape. And again, this one is exceedingly simple. I think by the time we get outside and you see how it works, it'll make more sense, but Right now, we're going to use something that's called the Magnus Effect to make something fly. And the Magnus Effect is basically just friction in the air between a moving body and, again, the air. Friction is just the force of two things. Rubbing, um, whenever you have a flying machine, uh, an airplane, a helicopter, a boomerang, a frisbee, whatever, it's experiencing a couple forces on it. First of all, gravity is pulling everything towards the center of the Earth all the time. That's one force. If you have something moving through the air that's flying, lift is what opposes gravity. The force of lift is what lifts our flying machine up, which should make sense. It makes sense to me. It sounds pretty intuitive. But the more lift you get from something, the more drag is experienced on that object. And drag is a force that slows it down. So as you have an airplane moving through the air, the more lift it receives, it is also encountering more drag, which is slowing it down. And that's part of the reason that jet airplanes travel four and 500 miles an hour or more is because you need that speed to generate that lift because drag is constantly trying to slow you down. Now, this first flying machine takes advantage of that drag to generate lift. And it also uses, like I said, the Magnus effect, which is just friction between the air and this device. So what you're gonna do, take your two paper cups or plastic cups and put them bottom to bottom. So one of them, open side should be down towards the ground, one of them, open side should be up towards the top. Then you're going to take your tape and you are simply going to tape them together. Again, insanely simple, 
does not look like something that's going to fly at first. Wait till we get outside. You'll see how it works. So now I have two paper cups open and facing out on both of them. I'm going to set that aside for a bit. Now is when you're going to want to grab your rubber bands. And this is, uh, this is important to making this guy fly. And I'm going to do this kind of up close so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to make a chain of rubber bands. And the way you're going to do that, you're going to take two rubber bands. If you want to do this on the floor or somewhere flat, you can. Place one rubber band slightly over the other rubber band. And pull this one partially through. Tuck it down under its other end. And pull. Even like two rubber bands. Now we're going to do that a couple times to make a chain of maybe two or three rubber bands. So again, here's the end of my chain. I'm going to put it over a band. I'm going to pull part of that bottom band through the top band. And then I'm going to fold it back under itself and pull. I hope that makes sense to everybody. So I'm going to give you a minute. Let you finish making your rubber band chain. While you're doing that, I'm going to add one or two more to my chain. And then we're going to take that rubber band chain and we're going to pop it into our Magnus Effect double cup flyer. And we're going to set that aside for a minute. Now we're going to move on to our paper and we're going to construct our second flying device. And this one I really like because this one is super open-ended. I'm going to show you how to make some really, really serious paper airplanes. And I'm sure everybody has seen this thing here. You've probably thrown this around in the classroom at school or during recess. Everyone makes a paper airplane like this, it seems. Really, a uh, piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it here, fold it here. And the thing is, it works. But it's not really like the craziest or best paper airplane in the world. You can make some really insanely cool paper airplanes that will fly incredibly long distances and you can make variations on these things for days and this is where the scientific method comes in if you remember we talk all the time science is a tool science isn't about what you know and that thing didn't even really fly actually it just kind of collapsed under the table i'm going to show you how to make like i said some pretty serious airplanes that thing would have gone until uh it ran out of room now I'm going to show you how to make the basic form and from here you can tweak this as much as you want. And like I said, this is where the scientific method and experimenting comes in. Science is a tool. Science isn't what you know. Science is how you figure out things. And we're going to use this as a base to figure some things out. So once I show you how to make this basic structure, you can change the size of the wings. You can change the shape of the wings. You can change how aerodynamic it is, how streamlined it is, how much lift it's going to get, how much drag it's going to get. And probably eventually, given enough time, you can find the ultimate design for the perfect paper airplane. So the first step for this is probably going to be about the same every time. You know, take your piece of paper, I'm going to point it at you with the long axis or the long way facing towards you and away from you. You're going to get one piece of paper or one piece of the corner. And this is also an important thing to mention. The more precise you are and the more careful you are, the better your plane is going to be. You want it to be symmetrical, the same on both sides. So take your time, make your folds neat. And when you fold something, crease it. And I'll show you in a second by dragging your fingernail across it. So you're going to take that corner. And you're going to fold it over and you're going to try to line this edge up perfectly with this edge. So get that corner down here, maybe hold it with your finger and then pinch it up at that tip and make sure these two edges are lined up perfectly. Now if they are, go ahead, crease it at the bottom and then just drag your fingernail up that crease to make sure you get a nice sharp crease. Now if you want and you have access to one you can use a ruler too and that might help you. It might help you to hold it flat up against the edges. You can drag it down here to make the crease if you have stubby fingernails like I do. Now you're going to open it back up. This one's going to be a little easier but you're going to make the same fold but on the other side. So you're going to get the opposite corner. And like I said, this will be a little easier because you have this crease to guide you. So 
When you fold it over, take the crease that you made earlier, line it up with that same crease on the bottom piece, put a finger there to hold it, push up towards that top edge, make sure that's nice, it should be right at the corner there. This should line up perfectly. You can take your ruler if you have it and spread it out like that. You can take your fingernail if you don't have a ruler and drag it over the edge. So you've made the exact same fold in two different directions. Now you're gonna open it up again. And you should be looking at a piece of paper with a folded X in it. Now, this is the hardest part. It's also the most important part. Grab that X from the sides, right where my thumbs are. So right where the center of that X is, you're gonna put your thumbs on the edges of the paper and then maybe kinda of pinch it with these two fingers in the middle. Bring your thumb in and you're going to make that X collapse on itself like that. I'm gonna open that back up and do it again in case anybody missed it because this is, I said the hardest part, and the most important part. And actually, if that's, if you're having trouble figuring out how to do that, you can take the whole thing, flip it over, and fold these creases back like this. Put a crease here, then flip it back over, and it'll make that almost happen on its own. Everyone catch what I did there? Now, you have the base and the basic shape for the ultimate paper airplane. Now, if any of you have ever done our flight activities during our Outside the Box Labs after school programs, we talk a lot about the airfoil shape and generating lift. Tonight, we're kind of going to take a slightly different approach, and we're going to use what's called the angle of attack to generate lift. So when you have something flying through the air, if it's going kind of straight parallel to the ground, it's just cutting right through that air. If it's moving more like this, Air is building up underneath it and creating pressure. At the same time, there's very little air above it, so that's creating lower pressure, and that can generate lift. Now again, I said the more lift you have, the more drag you encounter. So as this thing is moving at this angle through the air, that high air pressure that's lifting it into the air is also slowing it down. It's forcing it backwards a little bit. So there's a balance you're going to want to achieve. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's get back to our folding here, though. So now you have this sort of triangle thing with a rectangle at the bottom of it. And you should have these little flappies here. And we can use these flaps later if we want, but I'm going to show you a very basic design. You take the thing, and you're going to fold it perfectly in half. And make sure you line up the edges perfectly before you crease it. Hold everything tightly here. And go ahead and make your crease. And again, if you need the ruler for help, you can always position that ruler right along that point, fold it over the ruler, and then crease it. Now you should probably see where we're going with this already. Now we're going to make the wings. So this is going to be the nose of our plane. Now before I make the wings, I said that as you generate more lift, you're going to get more drag, and that's going to want to slow your plane down. I'm going to do something to give my plane a little bit more weight in the front. So when I throw it, it's going to have a little bit more energy up towards the front, and that's going to speed the thing up and kind of resist that drag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my tip of my nose back in. So again, line up the crease with the other side of the crease, and I just probably less than an inch right there. I'm going to crease that nice, and I'm going to fold the thing back in half. Now let's make some wings on this bad boy. Now you could just fold it right here and have one big wing. And a big wing is going to generate a big amount of lift. But the bigger the wing and the more lift, the more drag. So you're going to end up with an airplane that flies very slowly but stays in the air for a long time. I'm kind of more into speed. I'm more of a jet plane guy. So I'm going to make my wings a little smaller which means I'm going to get a faster airplane, but it's not going to get quite as much lift. And your goal over the next couple days and into the next week or two, if you want, actually you can do this forever really, is mess around with this design and see if you can figure out what the perfect size and perfect shape wing is to balance lift and drag. So the way I'm going to do this 
I'm going to start my next fold from here, and I'm going to go back at kind of an angle towards the back of the plane. Actually, I'm probably going to go from here to here, from this point to this point. So I'm going to use the ruler for this one, but you don't need to. I'm just going to kind of get that fold started. And then I'm going to crease it real nice with my fingertip. Now, flip the thing over. I said being symmetrical is important, so just line up this fold with that fold, and they should be exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. So again, go from that point to this point back here. Make sure your edges line up real nice, and crease. Now I'm going to put the wings on mine, and to make this into a wing, and again, this is really up to you. How big do you want your wing? You can fold it farther back. You can... Pull your fold up this way to make a smaller wing. I'm going to go for kind of a medium-sized wing. I do want to get some lift out of this bad boy, but I want it to go fast, too. Flip it over. And match up your this edge with this edge. So I'm going to pull that till they're even. Hold them still. And crease. So now we have our basic plane, but we're not quite ready to fly it yet. First thing you want to check out, when you look at your plane from the front, you first unfold it, your wings are probably going to hang down like that. That's not good for a stable plane. You want what's called dihedral angle. You want your wings to kind of point up like this. And the reason that's important is because as the plane starts to tip or roll, this wing up at the top will experience a little bit more drag. This one down here, in turn, will pick back up, if that makes sense to you. As it tips, more lift on this wing will bring it back up, so it tends to stay pretty stable. Another thing to think about, and the Wright brothers were actually the people that discovered this idea, or really worked with it the most, a plane has three directions it can move. It can roll, or we have what's called pitch, which is the nose going up or down. And then we have what's called yaw, which is the plane going side to side. So a plane can yaw in flight, it can roll in flight, or it can pitch up and down. And we have three angles and three surfaces that we can use to control that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add something to control pitch to my plane. I'm just going to take my two fingers and put them right along this little ridge at the bottom. Put my thumb on top, and I'm just going to kind of bend that up. I'm going to make a little kind of a little bump on that. Those are kind of like what are called ailerons or flaps on a plane. The air goes over the wing and hits that raised surface. It pushes the nose up a little bit, which forces the wing to go into the air this way, which generates more lift. So if you put a little fold up on the back of your wings, you'll get a little bit more lift out of your plane. Now, if you put too much of a fold, sometimes I'll take scissors and cut a little flap and bend it up. You put too much of a fold, your plane might just keep going up you can make a plane that does tricks and does loops. You can make a plane that just goes like this and then runs out of steam and starts to fall. So experiment with that. Experiment with control surfaces. If you throw your plane into the air and it wants to spin one way or the other, you can bend this to control the yaw, and that's kind of like a rudder. So if you bend it to the, the plane will turn. If you bend it, the plane will turn that way. So whatever way the bend faces, it'll turn. If you bend it to the right, it'll go to the right. So now that we've kind of got our control surfaces figured out, we're going to make a launcher for this thing. And this is actually really simple. And this is where your paper clips are going to come into play. Take a normal paper clip, and you're going to want to get your tape again if you don't have it. And you take your paper clip, and you pretty much just straighten the thing out all the way. And once you have it all nice and straight, lay it down inside and kind of open up your plane. Lay it down inside the middle. You don't lay it down there all the way though. Maybe about half of it inside your plane. Pull a little tiny piece of tape off. And we're going to tape that down there on the bottom. You might need to flatten your plane out to do this, but you can fold it up again. So now you have a plane that has a piece of wire sticking out of the front. Take that piece of wire and bend it. 
into a hook. Now we're going to go outside in a second and launch these and I'm going to show you how to make the cup flyer go and how to use this, but I'm going to bring up again safety. These things are really going to move when we launch them. A lot of them are going to get quite a bit of lift and go maybe straight up and then loop around and come back down. You, know, you don't always know where they're going to go until you experiment with them. So be careful. This isn't something you're going to point at your little brother or little sister like it's a joke. And it's, This can hurt if it hits you in the face. I want you to be very, very, very careful with this. I want you to make sure you're not pointing at the people, animals, windows, that sort of thing. Like I said, these are going to get some serious, serious velocity when we go. So, I want everyone to gather up their cup flyers, their paper airplanes, and we're going to move outside and do some launching. All right, we are outside. Wow, is it nice out here. We're gonna launch this guy first. And I said, this guy flies based on a principle called the Magnus Effect, which is very similar to the angle of attack that gives the paper airplane lift. We're gonna make this thing spin and we're gonna propel it forward. But the spin is going to go this way. Now, as it spins, the bottom side of it is gonna rub against the air harder than the top side which is going to spit the air back out this way as it spins against the air it's going to kind of bite into it and catch and it's going to make this ridge of high pressure air underneath it which is going to push it up so the more it flies and the more it spins the higher up it should go and this is kind of the same idea that makes a golf ball fly the way it does and that's also the reason golf balls have dimples on it if you're interested in this I'm challenging anybody to see if they can cover this in something that would generate more friction sandpaper rough paper towel I don't know think use your imagination to see what you can come up with but I'm gonna show you how to get this thing into the air first using your rubber band chain and then I'm gonna leave it up to you to experiment with it you're gonna take your rubber band chain and you're gonna hold it with a thumb and then you're gonna stretch it out a little bit and you are going to wrap it over the bottom, then over the top, back over your rubber band chain. Keep your thumb there so the rubber bands don't snap off. Back over the top, around towards yourself to the bottom, away from you over the top, towards yourself down to the bottom. And then take the end and kind of get a good grip on it. Now you're going to turn around like this you're going to point it towards this guy, and you're going to pull that rubber band nice and tight. Now, I didn't launch that one with a lot of force because I wanted everyone to see it, but if you noticed, that thing went straight up and hung in the air. Just that friction with the air generating that high pressure in the front held that thing hovering for probably a second or two. Just two silly empty cups you can make a flying machine out of. And if you really tweak that design, you can probably get that thing to go 40, 50, or 60 feet, especially depending on the wind. Now we're going to take a look at how to launch our paper airplane. And this is where you're going to find out if your first design was perfect or if you need to do a little work with it. Now, we outfitted this thing with a little hook at the front, which is also going to add a little bit of weight, but that's going to give it a little bit more momentum. So that's going to make it fly faster. Hopefully that speed is going to translate into greater lift. It's also going to translate into more drag, which will slow it down. But overall, that should be a good thing. And you take another rubber band or you can take your rubber band chain. Hook it onto that hook that we made. Pull it in between your thumb and forefinger. Aim towards the sky, not straight up. And ah, 
Perhaps I made my hook too great. I'm gonna try and open my hook up. But this is how experiments work, this everybody. This is science at work, my friends. Science at work. Oh! Now, you'll notice my plane rolled one way, and we were talking about the control surfaces. So if it rolled, that means one wing got more lift than the other wing. And that could very well be fixed by these little flaps we made. So if mine rolled this way, that means I'm getting more lift on this wing and not enough on this one. So I'm going to try and fold up my flap or my aileron on this side. Not entirely sure where I dropped my rubber band in this rubber band colored grass. So I'm just going to give this a manual throw. Sarah's found it. Wait, I think there's something. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now another cool thing, you can make a launcher for these. If you have a piece of wood and you put a couple nails into it, stretch a rubber band in between the two nails and let go, get creative with this. You could totally mess with this for days, if not weeks. I'm almost 40 years old. I've been messing with it most of my life. So this is really something to keep you busy, especially on beautiful days like this. And you can make quite a number of discoveries like this. Let's see if that fixed my roll problem. Ah, oh, much better. Now, she's still got a little bit of yaw. She kind of made a circle. I am uh, launching this into the wind, which could account for that. But here, with this basic design and with these two cups tied together, you've got two flying machines that you could, you could tweak and perfect for days, if not weeks. Now, before we let you go for this week, I mentioned at the beginning, next week we're going to be getting into making our own rockets and we're going to launch the world's smallest hypergolic jet rocket fuel powered rockets. Um, this is actually the same idea that rockets that travel into space and to the moon use for their fuel. They have to use a fuel that will burn without oxygen and fuels that burn without oxygen are referred to as being hypergolic fuels. So next week we're going to learn how to actually use some common household items to make rocket fuel. We're going to make them really small because you don't want a huge amount of hypergolic rocket fuel in the house, but I think you'll be surprised when you see how simple it is. It's a lot of fun. Also, if anybody's interested in joining the Rube Goldberg Challenge, the main page of our website, www.outsidetheboxlabs.com, has information on that. Also, if you go to the programs and then follow that to home at Home Kits, you can find information on the At Home Kits. Yep. It'll have the, uh, the mystery items for the Rube Goldberg Challenge in them. So I hope everyone got at least a basically functioning flying machine. And like I said, it's a beautiful night out tonight. If it didn't fly the first time, you've got at least 90 minutes of sunlight to get out and try it again. There are a thousand different ways that you can adjust, tweak, and modify this thing. I'd be really interested to see some of your designs. So if you come up with something that works really well or you have something that flies really far, or maybe it doesn't fly that far, but it stays in the air forever, have your parents take a video, put it in the comments, send it to us through our email. You can, um, yeah, you can post it to our Facebook, post it to our Instagram. Um, I'm sure you guys can come up with something that flew a lot further than Talman. So if you think you beat him, post it. We want to see it. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I'd be really interested to see what you're coming up with. Um, Maybe we could even keep get some, trying. Don't worry can, about failing. Maybe we could get some paper airplane designs up on the website. If you send us some good stuff and yeah. you can show us how you made it, maybe we'll post some templates on the website so that other people can print them and we can get some paper airplanes out there in the world. So spring's coming. It's time to get outside. Let's, uh, let's make some flying machines, share them with us. And next week, same time, same place, we'll be back to launch some little tiny itty bitty rockets. Yeah, and if you guys have any problems or you have any questions, um, we can check the comments after this video is over. Um, but also you can email us at info at, at outsidetheboxlabs.com and then we'll get back to you. So if you had trouble with the rubber bands or anything specific, you can um, email us and we'll, we'll get back and to this you. We'll video checking them. This video is going to go up on YouTube. You can watch it again if you missed any of the steps. If I went too fast, if you were struggling a little bit, it'll be up there. I mean, call me if you get bored. I haven't been, I haven't talked to anybody in weeks. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Can't wait to see you again next week. I didn't fly bad there.